Welcome back everyone, this is Recon Stewart and today we're continuing my in-depth CDU tutorial where we're working together to learn the uh, very complicated nature of the A10C CDU IGI navigation system. Uh, so far we've gone over the what the CDU is, the uh, avionics auxiliary panel, the upfront controller, uh, the CDU repeater, uh, we've gone over each part of those four in instruments and then we just recently dove into the page knob of the CDU from position steer and waypoint and now we're going to dive into the uh, function select keys, the FSK keys, um, system, navigation, waypoint, offset, and flight point management. So. Uh, we're going to go ahead and switch our page knob to other and that will allow us to select one of the FSK keys here underneath the display panel and the first one we'll get into is the system page and the system page is again displayed when the AAP page selects which is an other and the system FS key function select key is depressed so here we are in the system page. The system page is selected after completion of the CDU startup bit test. The system page initialization data will be displayed. This page and its subpages are used to check status of the GPS and INS navigation systems, as well as related systems such as the CADC, CDU, HARS, LASI, and other related navigation input systems. When you're in the system page, you can branch to the following subpages of IGI. INS, GPS, Reinitialize, LASTI, HARS, DT, SAS, which I don't know what that stands for. Um, and then you can hit the page down knob here to see the others. We've got the DTS system, we've got the LaRue test, and then we've got off PID, CADC, CDU test, and MX log. And we'll get into all this stuff. Most of this probably isn't modeled in the CDU in the A-10 of Digital Combat Simulator, but we will certainly take a look at it. So let's go back to page one of the system page and uh, let's see here. If you wanted to select any of these, you can use your LSK left or LSK right keys. So the first one we're going to hit is the LSK left one, the Iggy page and the embedded GPS INS subpage is displayed when you hit uh, the IGI LSK1 from the system page. This page indicates the operating mode of the embedded GPS INS navigation system and this page tells you if navigation data is being supplied by GPS INS or both. So we're going to go ahead and hit that button now and at the top you can see in line 1 or excuse me line 3 uh, status of the Iggy INS and it can be either N for not communicating, I for initializing, V for valid, F for failed, or T for test. So we can see that an INS is valid and then we can also see that GPS is valid and we can see that uh, MSN which stands for missionization section is also valid. And then on line four, it displays the current status of the current flight driver, and this can be either blended, which is a combination of INS and GPS navigation input. Uh, it could be INS, which is only INS navigation input, or it can be GPS, which is only GPS navigation input. And then of course, we've got the, uh, what's called FOM, or figure of merit. And FOM indicates the quality performance of a device. In this case, it's used to indicate the accuracy of INS-derived navigation data. This can range from 1 to 9, and represents with 1 representing accuracy of 26 meters or less, and 9 representing up to 5,000 meters. As such, the lower uh, FOM, or uh, figure of merit, the greater the accuracy of the INS data. And of course, this goes for GPS and the blended IGI as well. As you can see that we currently have a figure of merit of 1 for INS, the best it can be, 
GPS is one, and the blended Iggy is also one. So we're looking pretty good, as well as uh, having solid navigation data that we can be confident in. So let's skip to page two. And page two uh, displays the status of several EGI Iggy shop replaceable units and operational flight programs. So the first one is provides the status of the Iggy system processor. And again, there are five possible states. N for not communicating, I for initializing, V for valid, F for failed, T for test. So we've got the system processor, which is valid. We've got the Iggy GPS receiver, which is uh, to the right here, which is valid. We've got the uh, ISA inertial sensor assembly, which is valid. We have the inertial electronics, which is valid. We have the Iggy power supply, valid. And we have the uh, MSN, which is the configurable avionics interface card, which is valid. Now, do I know what any of those are? No. So if anybody wants to chime in in the comments, uh, I'd be happy to uh, have your input. Um, but I certainly don't know what those mean. But I'm happy that they're valid. And then the Iggy chassis is also valid. And then if we look further down, um, you can see that the Iggy OFP displays the uh, ID of loaded Iggy OFP software. So our ID is Alpha 10 Papa 4. Um, the status of the Iggy OFP is disabled. And uh, the GEM OFP displays the ID of the GPS receiver which is 00, zero equals 017. So if we go to page 3 and 4, it shows us a number of bit tests. And from what I understand, none of these are modeled in the system. All right, so that is the system Iggy subpage. Let's go to the system INS subpage. You can control and monitor the alignment of the INS navigation package view current INS position, and update the INS. You'll most often use these subpages when aligning the INS or to help diagnose an INS failure. Note that when you start the Iggy, the INS will automatically start its alignment. We did that at the beginning when we flipped on these two switches and we went through that alignment process. And this page allows you to branch to other inertial navigation system subpages. So we've got align, we've got alternate align, we've got position, we've got miscellaneous, We've got INS status and we have update. So if we click on the LSK left one for a line, it will show us uh, on line four uh, position source, which is automatic because it's loaded data from the DTC. Uh, we've got coordinate format select, which can either be uh, UMS co UTM coordinates or MGRS coordinates or uh, lat launch. So right here we've got lat launch and UTM. And we've got the uh, positional uh, grid and spheroid, which again is always WG84. And we went over this a little earlier, but here is the time and alignment status. The left numeric displays the time that the INS has been in alignment mode. The right numeric displays the alignment status. Uh, so T equals 4.0.0.8. And then, of course, we did the uh, ground alignment when we first started up the jet. And ground alignment, when first starting the aircraft and aligning on the ground, will be selected by default. And this results in a full gyro compass alignment. The average al ground alignment time is five minutes and is automatically started when the Iggy switch is set to on. The aircraft, aircraft must not be moving for correct alignment. Then, of course, there are emergencies or scramble situations which you might choose an in-flight alignment. If the INS alignment um, needs to be realigned while the aircraft is in flight or moving on the ground, then this option is used. This alignment process uses current position and velocity measurements from the INS. Before starting an in-flight alignment, Iggy steer point and anchor should be deselected from the navigation mode select panel, which is up here, which we saw earlier. And then we've got the navigation, which when after alignment is complete, indicated by a flashing INS nav ready enunciation, which we saw earlier, you hit 
the LSK right 3 button to put the INS into out of alignment mode and into navigation mode. And then you can press INS LSK right 4 to come back to the INS page. All right, and then we have the alternate align page branch. So we click on that. This uh, subpage allows the selection and display of the ultimate align page. This page is the same as the align page, but provides the ability to do a fast alignment along with a manual entry of magnetic heading. Ground and in-flight alignment options are not available on this page. Use a fast alignment when Iggy GPS is not available or a quick, less accurate alignment is needed. So again, uh, you've got your position source, which is auto from the DTC, coordinate, coordinate format selection, which is UTM or lat long, Alignment time and status is still here. Uh, fast alignment on right three. This alignment mode, this is the LSK button that you'd hit if you need to do a fast alignment. Uh, this alignment mode is significantly downgraded from a ground or in-flight alignment, but requires much less time. A fast alignment is based on stored heading data and best available true heading, or BATH. This, would, this mode would generally be used when Iggy GPS data is not available or for faster alignment that sacrifices accuracy is needed. Uh, you've got your magnetic heading. Uh, you can see that we're turning, so our magnetic heading is counting down. And uh, you can, uh, again, once everything is aligned, you can hit this button here in nav and set uh, out of alignment and into navigation mode. And if you hit this button, LSK right 4, it'll take you back to the INS subpage. Okay, the position page. The position page allows the selection and display of the position page, or excuse me, the position subpage. Uh, the position page displays your current lat long and UTM coordinates as well as the projected cross track deviation. Elements on this page are again your lat long, your UTM coordinates, and a cross track deviation which displays in miles left or right of the selected course line as indicated on the HSI that is pegged at 9.9 .9 nautical miles when in blended or INS and 5.4 nautical miles when in GPS. So currently we are in GPS, which is the most accurate, and so we are at 5.4 uh, cross-track deviation in nautical miles. Then it shows our current altitude, which is still 10,828 feet. And it lets us select a position of GPS, INS, blended, and we're going to stick with GPS here. All right, let's go back to INS and let's go to INS status page. This page shows the Iggy INS display mode, status of the INS data sent to various systems, and the selection of attitude mode. So it looks like it's showing valid on a number of things. So let's see here. Mode is nav. And it can be a number of things. It can be off, it can be standby, it can be gyro compass, it can be AA for in-flight alignment, it can be stored heading alignment, it can be navigation mode, which we're in. It can be best available true heading mode, it can be attitude mode, uh, test mode, or navigation alignment refinement mode. But right now we're in nav. And we can, we can see that we're currently uh, in, you can select attitude mode, but that will disable Iggy and HARS. So we're gonna leave that alone. Not sure what attitude mode is. Okay, let's see here. And then, of course, uh, displays the status of Iggy INS data to the following systems. The ADI attitude, the HUD attitude, the navigational data, nav ready data, altitude data, and sensors data all are valid. Okay, so we know that everything is valid here, so let's jump back into the 
system INS page and update. This page, the update page, allows you to select a waypoint and provide an overhead INS update when flying over it. The basic procedure is to select a waypoint uh, in the Fly2 database, press the Proceed LSK, which is here, LSK right 3, overfly the waypoint's known location, such as a prominent landmark like Groom Lake or Creech, and then press the mark point button right here which I will not do and then you can choose to accept or reject the INS update data so basically if your INS system gets off you can find a coordinate in the CDU system a waypoint and then you can fly there and as you're over flying it you hit the mark point and you update the INS data so it has kind of a reset button it knows uh, where it needs to be all right Let's go back to system and let's go into the GPS subsection. This page displays GPS navigation status and additional subpage branches. You will most often use these subpages to monitor GPS tracking accuracy, uh, FOM, built in tests, bit tests, and setting the GPS key. So line 3 is initialization mode. This allows the selection of the GPS's initialization mode. Asterisk indicates that GPS is in initialization mode. Um, you will see this when it's first starting up or after being restarted mid-mission in case of a failure. Currently, we are in the navigation mode marked by the asterisk at LSK2. And this is showing normal operating mode of the Iggy GPS after initialization has been complete while we're on the ground. And then the GPS figure of merit, or FOM, is in the center. And again, uh, anywhere from 1 to 9. And the lower the number, the greater the GPS data accuracy. So it's good to see that we're at FOM 1. And then the expected horizontal area displays the GPS expected horizontal area in feet. And this is only valid in nav mode. And so right now, we have a zero uh, expected horizontal error. However, we do have expected vertical error of 22. Uh, and then we've got, let's see here, ST5 and ST3, lines 6 and 7. These lines display the number of satellites, 0 to 4, being used to calculate the navigation solution in state 5 and in state 3. The sum of state 5 and state 3 are a number from 0 to 4. State 5 is preferable and provides the best GPS uh, figure of merit. And when the Iggy GPS is receiving from both position and velocity information from a satellite, this satellite is in state 5. When the Iggy GPS is only receiving position information from a satellite, this satellite is in state 3. Usually state 3 occurs only briefly during initial satellite acquisition or during periods of jamming or noise. So right now, we've got four satellites, and we're receiving both uh, position and velocity information from them, which puts us in state five, which is preferable. And then we've got the GPS status page, uh, the GPS branch line select page, the time page, and the GPS keys page. So. Let's go ahead and click on the GPS stat page. And this is looks like uh, testing to see if all of our information is valid. It can be either V for valid or F for failed. And the nav data indicates the status of GPS navigation data and ours is valid. Uh, bit in progress indicates the status of the GPS bit progress, which is either not in progress or yes in progress. Initialization required, if the GPS requires time position or almanacs, this will indicate either N, initialization not required, or Y, initialization required, and we've already done that, so ours is N. Um, let's see here, UTC. This indicates the status of the GPS time and can be either V, UTS time is valid, or F, UTC time is not valid. Our time is valid. Almanac required. If the data almanac is required, this will indicate Y. If not, it will indicate N for no. And our almanac is required. 
Uh, filter status indicates the type of Kalman filter being used for the GPS filter. Uh, currently, we are using uh, an INS navigation system, but it can also use a PVA position velocity acceleration mode. Uh, let's see, where are we at here? R3, GPS status. Uh, the global status of GPS is valid. And then keys used. This indicates the status of the current GPS key. Our key is valid. And then GUK user indicate identifies the status of the yearly key and can be either yes y for yearly or no for yearly key not in use and it looks like uh, we are not using a yearly key and then key parity the parity status of the loaded key can be either valid or f for invalid our key parity is valid and key to hr this line indicates if our key will be valid for the next two hours and it appears that it is and then if we press the uh, LSK4, it'll take us back to the GPS scratch page. But we actually want to go to page 2. And then it shows us if uh, the GPS receiver battery is working or failed, and ours is valid. Uh, it shows us if uh, four satellites are being utilized uh, for optimal navigation, and it looks like uh, it is valid. Receiver processing unit indicates the status of the Iggy GPS processing unit, uh, again valid. Mission duration, as number left of the slash indicates the number of days the GPS key will be valid for, and the number to the right of the slash indicates the number of days remaining that the GPS key will be valid for. So 180 days total, but we've only got two left. I think that is not modeled. Uh, let's see here. Sufficient keys status. If the loaded key will be valid for the duration of the mission, the field will indicate Y. If not, it will indicate N. Uh, key load, uh, it says unknown. Well, that's good to know. And then has keys. Sorry, erase fail. Uh, if the last key erase completed successfully, it will say yes or no. It looks like no. And then has keys. Uh, yes, it does say that we have been loaded with the key, and if not, it will indicate no. And then it, uh, it indicates key load failed, uh, says no. You can check this line to see if it was loaded successfully. Yes indicates it was not loaded. No indicates it was loaded. That's pretty confusing. Double negatives there. All right, and we'll hit LSK right for it, get back to the GPS main page, and then we'll go into the GPS bit page. This page allows you to view the bit test results of the GPS systems and any code word failures. These five pages are information only. The bit result elements on these pages consist of the following. The KYK status indicates the status of the Iggy GPS key circuitry. It can be pass or fail. The LRU status is indication of line replaceable unit, pass or fail. Uh, DP RAM status, field displays the status word of the memory shared by the Iggy and the Iggy GPS circuitry. Uh, let's see, DPR RAM status word two, same deal. Battery voltage uh, is unloaded. And battery voltage loaded shows loaded, and then the uh, required bit keys. And GEM checksum, checksum of the Iggy GEM. And then, of course, we've got pages one through five. And I do not believe that many, any of this is modeled, but this stuff is usually used by the ground crew. If there's any. Uh, a10 ground crew that can uh, explain some of this stuff better than I can, please make uh, uh, add a comment below and we can talk about it. Uh, the other issue is again, this stuff is very dry, so if you want to skip to the next section, I don't blame you. Um, but again, I wanted to go through every single page of uh, the CDU so that there's nothing that we didn't talk about, there's no unknown mysteries that uh, we haven't explored yet. So with that, we'll continue. We'll hit, uh, what is it here? The GPS LSK right four, we'll go into the time page. Time page allows you to set current date and time. 
and adjust desired time on target and adjust for local time. The desired time on target adjust key, which is here. Uh, this mission adjustment time added to or subtracted from the desired time on target for each waypoint that is has a desired time on target assigned. This causes the desired time uh, on each waypoint uh, to be assigned and changed reflected in the mission adjustment time. Uh, local time adjust uh, allows you to local time adjustment plus 12 to minus 12 hours entered hour hour minute minute and then of course the year displayed which for some reason it is July 30th 2011 and GM time, GMT time is 12 56 and 37 seconds all right, let's go back to system, and let's see here. Let's click on the reinitialize subpage. The reinitialize subpage allows you to reset the primary navigation and flight control system in case of malfunction. Before reinitializing a system, though, you can view its LRU status according to its code. So we've got uh, reinitialize INS. Valid, GPS valid, Lasty valid, DTSAS valid, and then we've got CADC, HARS, DTS, CDU, MBC, and MSN all valid. So let's go back to the system and the Lasty page. The Lasty page displays the status of the Lasty system and associated subsystems that includes its OFP, Weapon Release Events, and Ground Collision Avoidance System, or GCAS. And it also contains a subpage for wind data entry. So line three indicates ready, uh, yes or no. Lasty status is either not communicating, initializing, or valid. We are valid. Operational flight program, uh, depending on the status of the Lasty, it can be not attempted, in progress, successful, or failed. We have not attempted. Initialization load status. Uh, this displays the last initialization status. Again, uh, shows a successful. Uh, service action last performed. This last task that was performed will be listed in this field. Um, and it looks like load pass, and it, but it can be a number of different things. Uh, weapon events. There have been zero weapon events in this flight. Uh, that's not surprising because I haven't done any uh, weapon events. And the ground collision uh Avoidance system messages are zero because we have not uh, had any altitude alerts, uh, radar altitude alerts rather. And then there's the wind page. The wind page allows selection and display of the wind subpage, which provides the ability to enter wind data for seven different MSL altitudes. Each of these altitudes can be assigned a unique wind direction, wind speed, and temperature. So if we click in the wind page, now this is something if you Google or YouTube, you can actually get some tutorials on how to do this wind editing. I have attempted it in the past and I've found that maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. We're just not sure if it's actually modeled from what I understand. If I'm wrong about that, please comment below and let me know. But basically it lets you find the altitude the wind speed and direction and the temperature and enter it into this lasty system for wind correctional data and so it just adds more accuracy when you're doing unguided bombing uh, certainly from uh, higher altitude but it really lets you put those bombs right in the pickle barrel if it is a functioning system problem is is there are I think DCS does it in meters per second and we really need it converted to knots per hours and the direction that it lists is the direction the wind is blowing not the direction that it's from there's a lot of complicated calculations that you have to make and I'm really not an expert in it but if somebody else is or could post a link to it or could tell us that it's actually functioning in DCS or not I don't know but this is the page where you would enter all of that stuff in so on LSK 57 or excuse me lines 57 and 9 you press any of those and you're able to enter wind data into the field um, pressing the desired altitude in thousands of feet MSL 
uh, the current wind and air temperature. This field displays the uh, IFCC calculated um, wind and temp, which looks like it's 10 knots blowing 344 at 9 degrees Celsius. And then right three, this lets you select both uh, between both wind, temp, and none. Uh, this selection will be used by the IFFCC to determine which data is used for ballistic calculations. And then wind edit. This is uh, line 5, 7, and 9. After one of the altitude fields has been selected, enter altitude in the scratch pad and then press, press the associated LSK. You will then press the wind edit LSK to input the wind and temperature data. First enter the magnetic wind direction as three digits and then the wind speed in knots as two digits. Once the five digits are entered in the scratch pad, press the LSK again next to the selected altitude field. After wind direction and speed have been entered, enter air temperature in Celsius on the scratch pad and then press the temp LSK. Uh, the clear data will clear everything that you've entered and the last deep will send you back to the uh, last deep page. Anyway, uh, if you were interested in this, uh, go ahead and Google a tutorial. There are plenty out there. I'm just not sure that it's working. All right, so let's go back to the system page and HARS. And HARS is the Heading Attitude Reference System and can be monitored from this page for valid operations and data output. Right now we're not using HARS, we're using IGGY. However, <clears throat> line three uh, states, is this is invalid status, yes or no? Again, that double negative. So it is not invalid. Uh, if the data is invalid, the field will show yes, but if it's operating normally and providing valid data, it will say no. Role, HARS role in degrees and data validity code, V is valid, F is failed, so we are valid. Um, pitch, again, same as roll, valid, and magnetic heading, and again it's counting down because we're in a left-hand bank, but three, two, five, and then of course we've got the scratch pad in line 10. All right, uh, let's go back to system and to the DTSAS page. And this is the Digital Terrain System application software. This page allows you to view and configure the digital elevation navigation support. Most importantly, you can select between DTSAS or coordinate ranging CR modes from this page. The DTSAS function action line, line three, allows the DTS function to be enabled or disabled. Uh, you can see here that it is on and then the coordinating range is enables the coordinating range subfunction, which is also on. Horizontal position uncertainty uh, displays DTSAS calculated horizontal position uncertainty from 0 to 3346 feet. And right now we're at 512. And we've got vertical position uncertainty of 92. Predictive GCAS uh, is valid. Obstacle warning queue is valid. Passive ranging is valid. Look aside ranging is valid. Obstacle warning queue avoidance height entry is 100 feet. And it can go from zero to 1,000 feet. Entered uh, desired height if I wanted to change it to, let's say, 1,000 or no. Yeah, 1,000 feet. And I can change it there. Okay, let's go back to system and the system reset page. If a fault is discovered within the following systems, it's indicated by an N or an F status indication. You may wish to reset the system. Systems that can be reset from this page include Iggy, Lasty, CADC, KICKU, HARS, DTS. And each of the systems will have a following status indicator of N, not communication, not communicating, I, initializing, V, valid, F, failed, T, test. And we can see that all of ours are valid. But if you want to reset it, you can hit the associated LSK 
and you can reset the Iggy system. You can reset the Lasty system, which is low altitude safety and targeting enhancement. You can reset the central interface control unit, the Kick U. Uh, you can reset the central air data computer, the CADC. You can reset the HAR system, heading attitude reference system. Or you can reset the data transfer system, DTS. And let's go back to the system page and go to page two and into the DTS page. The data transfer system page and its nested pages provide you with the status of the data transfer system and means to monitor the data transfer data uploading and downloading. Most often this will be done through the DTS MFCD page, but if you encounter problems, you can use these pages to help diagnose the problem. So the DTS status page uh, is going to show not communicating, initializing valid or failed. Our DTS is valid. The ready is yes or no. We are ready. And then you've got uh, three sub pages of the DT sub LD, uh, DTS download, and DTS status page. So you can use uh, the DTS upload page. Uh, to upload all original waypoints, flight plan, CDU preferences, and LASTI settings, or all original navigation data, or upload recent navigation data, or upload CDU and LASTI preferences. And then you can hit DTS to go back to the main page. If you go to the DTS download page, um, you can specify the three primary sources of data, and once you select one, an asterisk will flash next to it. You can download all original waypoints, flight plans, CDU, and LASTI settings. You can download just GPS Almanac settings, or you can download LRU bit logs uh, using LSK left three. And then, of course, you can go back to DTS with DTS button LSK right four. And the DTS status page, uh, this shows the unique tracking code for the cartridge being used. Too bad we don't have cartridges in DCS yet. Uh, the version number and software, the mode index, excuse me, the DTS mode, and we've got index, the self-test status, uh, and then the bit tests. And we'll go back to DTS and back to system and page two and we'll do the LRU test. This page allows you to run tests on several of the primary line replaceable units. This includes the CADC, the CDU, the DTS. If you encounter a problem with one of these LRU systems, you may wish to run an LRU test. So if you click on LSK, one left, you go to the Iggy test page, and if you hit the GPS, it will run a test of the Iggy GPS LRU, or the INS LRU, or the Iggy missionization LRU, or you can stop uh, a test of the Iggy MSN, and then of course you can use LSK right one to go back to the test page. And you can use uh, LSK left two to run a test on the CDAC. And it can have one of three indications, untested, IP test in progress, or go pass test. Uh, the control display unit. And again, it can have uh, untested, uh, test in progress, or pass test. The data transfer system, same deal. Uh, test mode. This will run a test of the CDU LRU. You must first press this LSK. Upon doing so, you'll be prompted to select either yes or no. If you press yes on the CDU keypad, you can press LSK L7 to start the CDU LRU test. To end the test, press the exit testing LSK field. I don't want to do this while well in mid flight because I don't know what's going to do. Uh, and then, of course, uh, you can record any of the tests that you do. 
All right, let's head back. And we'll go to system. We've got the operational flight profile identification subpage. And basically, subpage one here, uh, the first line indicates the OFP startup identification number and checksum. So SU 2.09 and then the checksum number. Uh, the CDU OFP identification, uh, that lists this uh, identification numbers. The DTS identification, which is PO1A. And we can go to page two. And this is the Iggy OFP identification and checksum. Uh, the Iggy GA GEM identification and checksum number. And the DTSAS identification number. And let's go back to system, page two. We've got the CADC, Central Air Data Computer. And this is just going to show if there's any faults, and uh, we don't have any faults. It says the CADC status is valid. Uh, pressure altitude, it shows current aircraft altitude in feet according to pressure, and can be valid or not. So we're at 11,923. And then we've got the baromic altitude, which shows us at 12157, which is what our HUD shows, and it's also valid. We've got true airspeed at 292. We've got, and valid, we've got Mach at 0.44, valid. Indicated airspeed at 235, valid. And the temperature at 8.53 degrees Celsius. And let's go back to system. Page two. And CDU test. CDU test subpage allows you to run status tests of the various CDU subsystems. You would use this page to help diagnose, diagnose any CDU failure indications. Uh, so let's see here. DKI, status of the CDU keyboard indication, pass or fail. RAM, random access memory. Uh, let's see. Programmable memory is EEPRO, P-R-O-M, pass. Floating point processor, pass. Heading Attitude Reference System Interface, HARS, is PASS. And 1553 Bus Random Access Memory is PASS. Start. To test the status of the above items, you can press the Start LSK. Upon pressing Start, each of these items will be tested, and its status result will be listed as either PASS or FAIL. I don't know, we should see if we can do that. Nope, doesn't work might not be modeled. Data pump, this will normally be set to off and will only be used for maintenance tests. So maybe we should turn that off. And we can go back to the LRU test by hitting LSK right four. And uh, we can go down to uh, page two. Oh, sorry, excuse me, one more thing. The bitball control, press this LSK to branch to the bitball control page and this alerts ground crew of CDU failures. And if we go back to the system page, page two, and the maintenance log subpage. This log provides the ability to view all recorded maintenance logs. Uh, let's see, increase, oh, those don't do anything, but uh, forward to the next recorded log file or forward back to the previous log. Mission date time, uh, the date time of the log is listed here. We don't have that empty maintenance log. And then we can erase all logs or we can write a new log or for ground queue crew to view log data. I don't think any of this is modeled. Okay, that was probably the most boring and awful part of the CDU tutorial, that system page. Pretty awful, pretty dry. Uh, I hope you skip past it if you were bored, uh, but that took us a while to get through that. Hopefully, uh, being able to see all those things and click on all those buttons kind of 
at least takes away part of the mystery, which is certainly what it did for me. Uh, let's take a break and join us next time when we explore the navigation FSK key um, of the CDU. And we'll continue learning all that this program and system has to offer to the A10C in DCS. This is Recon Stewart. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.